In this demo, we're going to be going over a high-level overview of Acronis CyberProtect 15. So let's get started. When you first log in, you'll be coming to the dashboard here where you will see an overview that contains various widgets. These widgets allow you to look at different pieces of information related to the system and to be able to manage them accordingly. You can further drill down into widgets to get to more granular information, as well as if you needed to add widgets, you can just select the widget and put it in there. And they could be rearranged as well as downloaded into an Excel or PDF file, or you can send it via email. The Alerts tab will alert you to anything that is going on that you need to be aware of, such as a malicious file has been detected in quarantine to something not succeeding and things like that. The activities will generate a list of all the activities that have occurred within the system and we will go over threat feed in a minute. You will notice up here that you see organization here. Now organizations are set within the settings area. You'll see here that we have an organization east and west. So in the settings area, you'll see under accounts that this is where we would set this up. Now the account panel here shows you the organizational group with the tree of units and the list of administrators within that unit that is selected in that tree. Any account that is able to sign into the CyberProtect Web Console is a management server administrator. Organization administrators are the top level administrators, and unit administrators are administrators of the child groups or units. In the CyberProtect Web Console, each administrator has a view scoped to their area of control, and an administrator can view and manage anything on or below their level of security. I like to go to plans and discuss protection plans. So we're going to go ahead and create a plan. And in Acronis CyberProtect 15, you will notice that we have our backup. We can choose what we want to be able to back up. Choose continuous data protection, which allows you to have close to a zero RPO, where you can protect certain files or folders on a continuous basis in between backups. You can choose where to back up. You can schedule it. You can have your retention policies, encrypt it. You can convert to a virtual machine. You can choose application backup to choose Microsoft SQL and so forth. And then you can also have your different backup options. For the antivirus and anti-malware, our active protection, which has been around for five plus years, is our active protection to help you against ransomware that's out there. And when you have this turned on, you'll notice that there's three options there. You have notify, you can stop the process, or my option, I can generate an alert, I can stop the process, and then I can revert files back from cache as if nothing ever happened if it notices that things are being encrypted. Behavior Engine is helping you also protect from malware. This is the behavior heuristics type scanning that you can happen. And in this case, if I notice anything, I'm going to want it to go to the quarantine area. Self-protection helps prevent unauthorized changes to Acronis' own processes, the registry records, and executables and configuration files. Network folder protection. This option helps you define what types of network folders that are mapped as local drives. And this would also apply to folders that are shared via SMB or NSF protocols. Server-side protection would be that you want to protect network folders that are shared by you that are coming from external incoming connections, from other servers in the network that may bring on possible threats. Crypto mining process detection allows you to protect against crypto mining malware of using different computer resources, such as gathering your CPU resources. Here you can be notified or you can stop the process. There's no way to revert back but this allows you to notify it and to also stop the process. Real-time protection. This allows you to constantly check the system for viruses and other threats on your system. There are two different options here, smart on access, which I choose. That allows you to look for things as if they're being accessed or even when it's being launched. And then there's the option for on execution, which would be when it's being launched. And you can choose how you want to have as far as quarantine. You can either block or notify, or you can set up for quarantine like I do. You can schedule when you want to have this done. And you could do a full or a quick scan, and there's different types of events you could do, run within date ranges, and many different options. 
quarantine, you can choose how long you want things to be in the quarantine area. By default, it's 30 days. And then you can choose exclusions that you do not want to be part of this protection plan. Another feature is URL filtering. This allows you to choose a protection plan to say, if someone's going to be going to a malicious website content, you have options of either ask the user or you can automatically block it. We also have categories, 44 at this point, for you to look at, and you can choose to allow or deny these particular categories. And you can also have exclusions where you can have trusted URLs that you want to be whitelisted, or if something was not being blocked by the data definition files within the URL filtering, you can then go ahead and put blocked here, and it would automatically block them as malicious. If you decide to put the domain name, that also includes the subdomains of that particular URL. You have the ability to monitor and manage Windows Defender Antivirus and Security Essentials here. Instead of going to that console, you can manage all the options here. Vulnerability assessment and scanning. This will allow you to scan the system and you can choose in a protection plan if you want to do Microsoft products or Windows 3rd only products or scan for specific Linux packages. And you can schedule when you want to do it. Once you understand your vulnerabilities, you're going to want to know about patch management. So you can say, which Microsoft products do I want to do? I can update on specific products, whether it's versions or say I just only want the critical and the high and approval statuses of only approved. So there's multiple different ways that you can set up to do patching here. Same with the Windows third-party products. You can do the same. You can schedule it. You can also do a pre-update backup, which will actually take an image of the backup before you go ahead and patch in the event of something happens, you have the rollback functionality. And then finally, in a protection plan, you have data protection map, which there's 66 extensions by default. And this will allow you to have a data protection map or a heat map that allows you to see if everything is being protected. And if not, you can automatically go ahead and select those files to be protected. And you would also add devices to this protection plan. So you can have multiple protection plans for different devices. And even on the same device, you could choose different protection plans that you want. For example, the same server can have just backup as a protection plan and another one with just patch management for the same device. Or you can say, I want to choose a particular group of servers, say all my 2016 servers, and apply this as a patch. Going back to threat feed, a threat feed comes from our Acronis Cyber Protection Operations Center, otherwise known as CPOC. They generate security alerts that are sent only to related geographic regions. These security alerts will provide information about malware, vulnerability, natural disasters, public health, and other types of global events that may affect your data protection plans. So the Acronis CPOC will monitor these external threats and they'll generate alerts. You'll be able to see these alerts and then you'll be able to perform recommended actions depending on the type of alert. In this case, you will see the Starmer ransomware attacks using RDP. You can click here and you can run recommended actions against the different protection plans that this would affect. So instead of waiting for the protection plan to take effect, you can proactively move forward and protect in a smart way. You can also create a backup replication plan here by hitting Create Plan. You specify what agent you want to do, where you want to go, how do you want to replicate this? Would I only want to do all my backups, the fulls are only my last backup, when you want to schedule this, and create your retention rules. Validation is an operation that will check the possibility of data recovery from a backup. The validation of a backup location validates all the backups stored in that particular location. So we're going to hit Create Plan here. And you will notice that the validation plan will offer two different validation methods. You can do all backups or only the last backup. And then how do you want to validate? There are checksum. So you're calculating the checksum for every data block that's saved in the backup. Or you can run as a virtual machine from a backup. And this method works only for disk level backups that contain an operating system. If you need to use this method, you need an ESXi or a Hyper-V host and a backup agent, agent for VMware or agent for Hyper-V that manages this host. The agent runs a virtual machine from a backup and then connects to VMware tools or Hyper-V heartbeat service to ensure that the operating system has started successfully. If the connection fails, the agent connects, uh, well, attempts to connect every two minutes 
a total of five times. If none of them happen, then the validation fails. You can choose both of these methods. The operations will be performed consecutively. Depending on the type of backup location that you choose, whether it be cloud storage or NTS folder or tape device, calculating checksum or running VM, there are different options depending on what's supported in each validation plan. The cleanup is an operation that will delete outdated backups according to the retention rules. You will notice that you can specify the agents, the schedule, and what those retention rules were. The cleanup plan will support all backup locations except for NFS folders, SFTP servers, and secure zones. Under the anti-malware section, any files that went into quarantine from those protection plans will fall into the quarantine area. Under software management, we could see patches and vulnerabilities here. This will define individual patches, and you could filter to find certain patches only, or you could search for them. And in settings, you can choose to have automatically accepting agreements and automatic approval policies. You can patch from here as well, and you can put an approval status. Vulnerability is the same thing. Backup storage, you can see that you can specify your locations for your backup storage. For reports, you can come here and you can select pre-made reports here, or you can add a report. And finally, in settings, I wanted to go to protection and remote connection. Here, this allows you to provide how you want to do an update for components such as the anti-malware, the vulnerability assessments, and the patch management of when you want to schedule this and when you want it to download. You can also work with cache storage and the definition files itself. There is ability for the remote connection, and you can do this via Microsoft RDP or HTML5. There's also the ability for remote connection to do with a shared connection where you can give the person a URL that's good for 10 hours and then that information can be sent up to them where they can access a remote machine. Or if you wanted to run coterminous with somebody and have chat features, there is the run remote assistance. And when you were in there, you would actually go to your devices, select a device, and then remote connection, you'll see those different options. The settings area here will determine whether or not it would actually show up on the screen or not. Here is where you can see the agents, and if you need to update an agent, you can update the agent here, you can update the definition, you can clear cache. In the event, if you need more information, you need to collect systems information, you can do that from here as well. Another feature that you could do in here is you can use this agent to download and distribute patches and updates. This would be utilizing in a peer-to-peer -peer type environment. So if you have a stronger system that you want to have, takes all the patches and the updates and then distributes it out to the rest of the network, you could do that here. By default, they're all off. But once you turn this on, this particular machine would be the one that would be the hub that would actually get those patches and updates for all of the other machines. You have the ability to register your SANS, utilize SANS snapshots for backing up to ESXi virtual machines. Storage nodes, you can add a storage node here. System settings, this is where you can set up different system settings such as the notifications, email server, how long you want it to log people out if there's any inactivity automatically check for the updates, and then there's all these different default backup options. And finally, there's tape management. We don't have any tape devices here that are attached, but you would attach a device and you would then go ahead and refresh this page.